I will not tease you further. We will show you the bike and tell you more about its features and what makes it unique later. So stay tuned for the really interesting bits later. But for now, this is the brand new Grape G6. So, the G6 comes in three flavors, the G6, G6.1, G6.2, and G6.3. So, all of them have top-of-the-line components, and the G6.3 being the top of the range, with a 45 km per hour top speed and a 400 watt power. That's what's limited by the regulations, by the law. While the two other models are limited to 25 kilometers per hour and 250 watts, which makes it legally a bicycle. So the common fiber frame comes in three sizes, small, middle, and large. And it has an enduro bike geometry with 150 millimeters of travel front and rear, with a linear, linear swing arm progression for you bike geeks out here. So the frame is fully common fiber. And we didn't hide the fact that it's electric. We, have, we are celebrating it. We are showing its components. We are not hiding them. We are proud of the fact that it's electric and showing it. You can swap out the batteries, and you can carry a few of them, for example, in the backpack. So it's very easy to remove them from the, from the frame. And you can have three of them with you, if you like. But you don't really need it, because you can drive more than 100 kilometers depending on how you drive with one battery charge. So one of the things that is really enabling everything, and this is where it gets interesting, is the central intelligence module, or uh, central C CIM, how we call it. So this is fully developed by Predrag and his team, or Predrag, or how we call him, Too Kind. Where is Too Kind? He's somewhere here. Uh, so what they have developed here, so this contains uh, a camera, a color screen, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, eSIM, 4G connectivity, gyroscope, USB-C connector. So what we have basically developed here is a modern phone. So it contains everything that the modern phone contains. But what we do with it is quite different. It's completely developed in-house and made by us in Grape. So this is the platform that will be used for many different products of Grape and that will hopefully also be used by other bike companies. So this is mostly what the Grape is about. So it, this system has its own display for basic functionalities, but it really comes to life when you connect your phone to it. But I'll come to that later. Uh, this is the control buttons. So uh, it's, we have lots of functionalities in the bike. And in order to make it uh, usable and not too complicated, we were developing our own buttons for it. You might say, buttons, not a big deal. But uh, whoever has designed buttons that have to have lots of functions on a small space and be water uh, resistant knows how difficult it is. So uh, yeah, that's uh, very, uh, went through a lot of iterations to make it ergonomic. And this has a very innovative name. It's the box under the seats, or the butts, which is another camera that we have in the rear. The battery is also developed and produced in-house. Uh, it's, well, just to give you an idea, while other batteries are like 500 watt hours, this one is 700 watt hours. So it's more than most of the bikes in the industry, uh, which gives you enough range for about 100 kilometers with one charge. The motor we didn't do on our own. We have a partner from Taiwan, which is called MPF. Because the motor is restricted in speed and power, it does make sense to develop this because you cannot really innovate here. So we have a great partnership with this company. We have developed the software on our own for making a really nice ride. The control of the motor, the inverter characteristics were developed by our guys. Uh, and we have a really good partnership. And what is important to say, this is not a prototype that we are showing you here. This is not a Kickstarter campaign. We are doing this for a long time. We have prototypes running for years and being tested in all different environments, all different kinds of stages of prototypes. Uh, 
we've done thousands of kilometers. We have people hired just to drive bikes all day long to test them, and we actually pay them. So it's not a hobby. So we went through many iterations of the different components to get to where we are. And we are producing them. These bikes are in production. So we, uh, I think our website is online now. You can go on the website, order it now, and we are starting deliveries actually to dealers immediately to end customers in a few weeks, probably within April. So um, this is important to say it's not a prototype. This is a developed industrialized product that we are shipping uh, right now. We are starting to ship right now. We have wor been working with uh, Hrvatski Telekom or Croatian Telekom since 2017 on the connectivity. So uh, Hrvatski Telekom is a leader within the Deutsche Telekom group and has been the first to enable eSIM technology. So the bike doesn't have a physical SIM card. This is the next generation technology where you basically have a software SIM card. So we have developed this with Telekom to have the functionality and connectivity in 140 countries around the world. And all the bikes shipped will come with the connectivity integrated and will have free internet connection until 2022. Depending on our negotiation skills, hopefully also longer. <laughs> so all the bikes will be connected and online all the time. So uh, now we come to the really interesting part. The phone has two major use cases. One of them is when you are not using your bike, when you are somewhere else, then it connects to the bike via the 4G network, and you can access the bike wherever you are. We call that remote mode, but I will show you that later. When you're using the bike and you connect your phone, uh, the phone serves as a dashboard, so we call it dashboard mode, and all the functions are quite intuitively available. So uh, I will give you a few examples of what you can do here. So for example here, um, so the bike is designed to go on places that are not perfectly flat, that are not perfectly paved on the road. So simple range estimation will never tell you really how far you can go. And those of you who have used reg regular e-bikes know how primitive the range estimation is. So what we have developed is a system that takes into account the, the uh, terrain, your riding style, your assistance level, um, your battery state of charge, uh, and elevation, and calculates your range exactly uh, based on that. So for example, if you see a mountain and want to go to that mountain, you don't know if you can do it. You look on your map, and you know exactly if you can get there. And not just that, but also you know where your point of no return is. If you can just get there, or you can also get back home. Another cool feature, so this is basically connecting your heart to the bike. Sounds crazy, but actually you can set the range of your heart rate that you want. So for example, from 100 beats per minute to 130 beats per minute. And as long as you are in that range, the bike keeps a certain assistant, assistance. If you drop under that range, it will decrease the assistance. So you need to work harder and your, your heart rate goes up. If your heart rate is too high, it will give you more assistance, so your heart rate goes down. So your heart is connected to the bike's motor, which is quite cool. This is one of the other features. The bike has two cameras, so you will never miss a moment. The bike is filming all the time. If something unexpected happens, you go into, uh, you push a button, and it gives you the last 15 or 30 seconds or whatever, and you can immediately use those uh, videos to upload them on social media, to share them on WhatsApp, and you can include the data that you would like to share with your friends, like your heartbeat or how much energy you are putting into the bike, your speed, your flying time, and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Uh, so the other use case of the app is the remote mode, which enables you to control the bike wherever you are. I will show you how it works in a minute, but uh, some of the cool things, what it does is that it saves all of your rides. And while you ride, it saves the interesting parts of your ride in video and all the other data. So you can always go back on your phone and remember those rides and compare maybe with the new rides that you are doing and how you are progressing over time. So just an example of the use cases. So 
you are at home, your bike is somewhere else, and you get a notification that somebody is touching your bike because it has a gyroscope and G sensor in it. So you get a notification, you're looking at your phone, you see where your bike is, you, you know its location. So then you want to check what's going on, who is touching my bike. You push acquire photo and you see what the bike sees in the front and in the rear. So you can see if somebody is fooling around with your bike. Then you can send a text to the bike, like, you know, <laughs> remove your fingers from my bike or I'll kill you. <laughs> so if he's still, um, if the bike is moving, you see its location. If somebody wants to steal it, you can kill the bike, kill switch, and then the bike is dead until you come with your phone and connect to it. So that's a cool feature. But the best feature of it, and the part I'm most excited about, and you will see something later, we have a little surprise, is the gamification. So the sensors, the cameras, and the connectivity enable us to create incredible gaming and competition scenarios. So you can compete in real time against your friends or complete strangers, no matter where you are. So you can take part in other people's competitions or create your own competition the way you want it. So we can, for example, compete who was having the highest jump today. Who will charge or who will create input into the bike one kilowatt hour of human energy through your feet because we have a sensor in the pedals first? Who had the most heartbeats in the first week of ownership of the bike? For example, I'm in Croatia. You are in Russia, Mother Russia, Misha. Uh, and uh, we can compete against each other in real time. We can look at what each other is doing via a live video feed. So on my screen, I can see what you are doing, you can see what I'm doing, and we can compete in terms of energy, burning, speed, distance, whatever you want. The bike will be available on sale from today, from right now. It's from 6,500 euros to 7,500 euros, or should I say 7,499 if you order today. <laughs> so these are the three different models. But let's see something really interesting. Let's see how this looks in action. Let's hope it works. OK, so we have two guys competing. Oh, shit, one guy had a flat tire. OK, so we have one guy competing. So we can see him. This is live from his camera on the bike. We can see his location. We can see what he's doing in terms of cadence, heart rate, um, distance, speed, whichever information we want. And if we had several guys here, we could now see also who is better, who is faster. And now imagine this on a scale of thousands of people competing in real time around the world. So let's hope he doesn't get run over uh, with a car. So that will not be that great. So we can see here human power. So this is measured actually through the pedals. So we have a sensor here. So for example, we know exactly how much energy is going from the battery and how much from the human. So we can compete in the laziness, for example. So who is using more battery? Who is more active through his feet? So we have human power zero, so we hope he's still alive. Seems like he's having some fun. So tomorrow, some of you will go to a secret location where we have 70 bikes lined up waiting for you and where we will do this live competition with 70 people. And it will be, I think, a lot of fun. We haven't decided yet for what we will compete, for a beer or for whatever. Um, and uh, have some fun tomorrow. OK, so it seems like he still has a way to go. So we will see. Uh, Sven arriving here soon, so we will then make a little bit space for him to, to see him. And in the meantime, 
while he has to get to us, and he still has a few minutes, right? Okay, in the meantime, until he gets to us, enjoy the show. You can see the components of the bike around. You can see the bike. And uh, ask us any questions you like. Enjoy the show. And tomorrow, the guys who will go with us to the secret location with the plane will have a very interesting day. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming here, especially our friends, partners, dealers, supporters, fans from all over the world. We have many of you who came from long distances to get here today and for the event we have tomorrow. So thank you so much to be in the beautiful city of Zagreb in this beautiful venue today. So many of you here followed our journey from the beginning for the last 10 years. And many of you here also have been very important from day one of our journey. What we have set out to do from the beginning was sometimes considered or often considered impossible. It would raise eyebrows or cause skepticism because it seemed impossible to do. After I built my first electric car, the old BMW E30, the green BMW E30, uh, I wanted to build a car from scratch. And being in Croatia, there was no car industry, nobody that I could really ask for help or advice. But I wanted to um, ask somebody to help me, so I went to the University of uh, Mechanical Engineering in Zagreb and told them what I wanted to do, that I want to build a car. 
And they told me, it is impossible to build a car in Croatia. The sooner you give up, the less people will go under with you. Thrust mode. Well, it seems that it is possible to build a car in Croatia. It is difficult to remember, but just in 10 years ago, it was, everything was different. Electric cars were considered slow, dull, ugly, undesirable, something that nobody really wants to have, wants to own. Building an electric supercar back then seemed impossible, but everything is impossible until somebody does it. The picture people had back then were totally different than people have today. And one of the goals we had was to change what people think about cars, electric cars. So Jeremy Clarkson was one of the guys who was the biggest opponent of electric cars. So when he tested the Tesla Roadster, Elon Musk actually sued him uh, because he wasn't happy with how they presented the car because he was making fun of an electric car. And Jeremy said the concept one was the car which changed his mind. It was the fastest thing he ever saw and that it was brilliant. So quite an unlikely contender from a quite unlikely pray, place made a little bit of a contribution to the change. What I wanted to show you here is that it's possible that people who you don't expect to do something like that and from places you don't expect to do something like that can do it. Today Rimac has two business pillars. One is our supercars. You saw the concept one, but now the C2. Um, and the other part of the business is supplying other car companies with technologies, with batteries, powertrains, and so on. <laughs> B2B. <laughs> so we work for many of the car companies. Um, those are the public ones from Porsche, Pininfarina, Koenigsegg, Seat, and so on, but also for many, many things that are going on behind the curtain. And uh, an important thing for us is also that Porsche is a shareholder. They became a shareholder, shareholder last year. Um, and they are also a shareholder of Grape. So last year we presented the C2 on the Geneva Auto Show, again raising the bar, really trying to push the limits again, showing what is possible a car that is not just about the performance, but about the technology that's in there and the technologies that we then use in other products. And with that, we try to be the best in the world. That's what we are about. Our motto is, if we are not the best in the world with what we do, we will not do it. We want to be the best at what we do and to raise the bar. So from this garage, which was, this was Riemann's Automobile 10 years ago. Just eight years ago today, I was one guy in a garage. And what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm most proud of is the incredible team that we have built since then. So today, the image is quite different. We have a team of over 500 people. The guys on the left side is Rimac. Those on the right side are the crazy bunch of people that we are here uh, because of today. Grape. <laughs> So today is not about Rimac, but uh, what, this is really what I'm most proud of, is this team that is doing so many incredible things in Zagreb, Split, Osijek, in Xiangyang in China, in other locations where we have, and just doing things that so many people thought are impossible, and many people think still are today impossible. So just a big applause for the team. We are here today for something different. We are here today to show you what Grape is all about and what we have been working on very, very hard for the last four years. 
First, let me tell you the story of Grape and how Grape came about. So the guy you see here on the left is Zvonimir Sučić, Suki. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, that's the man. So he was the first guy who was crazy enough to give up his well-paid job and convince his wife to go work for a 20-year-old guy like that. <laughs> so uh, he was the first uh, employee of Rimac Automobili. I think it was 1st of April 2011. 1st of March. Okay. Uh, I, but what, we were working from home, I think, the first month. Then we came into a garage. So uh, he, I met him because he was doing bikes in his garage after work. And when I tried it, it was just crazy. It was so much fun. It was so fast, so powerful. One of the most fun things that I have ever tried. But it was a garage project. It was not a product that you can sell to your customers because he would either die or destroy the, the, the bike in two days. So we wanted to like, take the technology that we are doing for the car and the approach that we are doing uh, to build our own car and apply it to bikes. I thought, like, this is really fun, but let's make a real product out of it. Adriano Mudri, are you here somewhere? So Adriano, our head of design today, he is the designer of the Concept 1. He designed the Concept 1 and now is leading the team who is designing the C2 and everything else that we are doing. When he joined the show, uh, we went from a project making uh, Zvonimir's bikes into something real to a new brand, basically. So Adriano joined Zvonimir and I, and from modifying uh, Zvonimir's electric bikes that he did in his garage, Grape was born. So the first thing we did was the G12, which is a totally crazy machine. 12 kilowatts of power, 70 kilometers per hour top speed, Limited, it could go 100 without limiting. Uh, it's crazy fun and it's crazy legal. So that was one of the big limitations. Um, we have the G12H, which is a homologa homologated version, which is road legal, but it's a very, let's say, limited version of this bike just to make it road legal. So we have um, realized that the bike industry is dominated by the regulation. So the regulation means that we cannot uh, compete in power, we cannot compete in performance or speed because it's mandated how fast and how much power you can have in a bike. And the bike industry has been the same for decades or even a hundred years. Old companies that were building electric push, uh, that were building normal bicycles, push bicycles, they were making frames, putting wheels and seats on them and calling it the day. Uh, in the last 10 years, they are transitioning slowly to electric bicycles, but it works basically in the same way, where Bosch or somebody else, some other supplier, makes the motors for almost all of the bike manufacturers and makes the batteries. The bike manufacturers put them on their frame, connect everything, and that's it. All the bikes are pretty much the same. They are exciting to drive, but that's pretty much it. We wanted to, re to reimagine the biking experience, and we wanted to build something completely new. So by using connectivity, sensors, gamification, and lots of creativity of everybody involved, we wanted to do something completely different. So the new bike that we'll show you today, it's not about power, it's not about speed, it's about reimagining the game for electric bicycles. In order to do that, we first had to build a very unique team. So a team that's not building frames and putting stuff on like other bike companies do, but really start from a blank sheet of paper and develop something completely different. So we have a very diverse team. Uh, first of all, it's completely separate from Rimac. So I wanted to do that because I wanted that the people who are building the bikes live and breathe bikes, that they don't have to care about crash tests, about airbags, about the standards of the industry that we need to satisfy when we work for other big car companies, but that these guys are really into bikes. So Grape is a separate company, separate location, but nearby Rimac. And of course, we have exchange of knowledge, but everybody's doing their own thing. So Grape has currently 60 people. Most of them, I think 35, are in R&D, which compared to Rimac is relatively small. But as far as we are aware, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest R&D team in, uh, bike, in the biking industry. And uh, for the last four years, for the last four years, we are developing this bike. But it's not about the bike. 
It's about the whole system, the ecosystem, the whole connectivity and, and technologies that we have developed behind the bike that we will use in many other things. So uh, we have um, our software development, uh, mechanical engineering, embedded hardware, embedded software, the low-level software development. Uh, we have our prototyping and testing department, um, production, lots of the things you see here are produced in-house. Everything is developed in-house and our quality control departments. So let's hear a little bit about what this team has to say. I used to ride with my downhill bike on the local mountain and it took me some three to four hours to, to make the, the run. And my first, when my daughter was born, I didn't have so much time. So I attached the electric motor to my downhill bike. But I saw after a few iterations that uh, it was not good enough. So I made a complete bike from scratch. I came here in Wiemens Automobili in 2014 as a student. Uh, back then, Grape was just one of the projects that were you know, hanging around. So I was an uh, 80th employee. Uh, and uh, I can say that I'm huge. I'm extremely passionate about the whole story behind Wiemens. What I like about Grape is that absolutely everything is possible here. What usually takes weeks in a normal business setting here it happens from Monday to Wednesday. Uh, I like the fact that uh, we're not afraid of technology, we're not afraid of the competition. It's a truly can-do attitude uh, in absolutely everything we do. I work with a lot of young, smart, and ambitious people who are willing to work from dawn until dusk. Uh, they're very creative and they can build everything and destroy everything. Our job is to come up with creative ideas and make them real. This process isn't uh, simple. It implies, implies serious integration and joint efforts of multidisciplinary teams. So the team is extremely tolerant, um, and there are all sorts of characters here, from uh, extroverts to introverts, from creative geniuses to engineers, uh, from accountants to artists. Uh, what I like is that we uh, work together that everybody has their uh, strengths and we utilize the strengths of each of the teams uh, to achieve the goal. My passion and my hobby turn out to be my day job and that's not something that you see every day. I work in the biggest playground in this part of Europe. From my perspective, uh, I'm living my childhood dream. So. Yeah, our team is quite crazy, and that's what we love them for. We want to be anything but ordinary. Like, crazy is our motto. So it took four years of really hard work to get this basic idea of doing what you, we will show you today to really bring it to the market. I just talked to one of our early guys, to Christian. He told me, Mate, three and a half years ago, you told me until the end of the year, we have to be done with the project. So it slipped a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. <laughs> so this just shows you how much of a challenge it is. Uh, it's really a team effort. Everybody worked hard. Everybody worked their asses off to get here. Uh, and I would like to thank specifically one guy who made this possible. I mean, <laughs> everybody, everybody was really involved. Everybody was doing a lot. But building Rimac Automobili, it's more than a lifetime challenge. Uh, and Grape was really suffering by me not having time for it. It didn't, uh, I, I couldn't spend time on both companies. And until Kresho came on board, uh, when Kresho came on board, everything changed. So he's the guy who has to turn my crazy ideas into reality. He's running Grape from day to day. So thank you a lot, Kresho. So th that's really fun. Like in, in Rimac, I do everything too much. <laughs> and in Grape, I'm really involved only in the fun stuff, telling everybody else what kind of bike I want to make. So that's, that's fun. Thanks, Kresho, for that.